We're going to take a look at workflows in this video. And uh, Business Central comes standard out of the box with lots of different workflow templates. So in the finance area, they have general journal batch approvals. In the purchasing area, they have purchase order approval, credit memo approvals, um, all of these various functions. Same thing with sales. So in the sales area, they have sales order um, approvals and sales credit memo approvals. And all of these, uh, these various templates are already pre-configured and uh, allow you to very quickly set up a workflow. So uh, we're going to come back to these in a couple of moments, but uh, I wanted to just show you the workflows that are already set up out here, the templates and then show you how you can actually use these to build your own workflow and then how the workflows work. So I'm going to uh, go back to the main menu and the next area that I'd look, like to look at uh, in the approval system to work for is the approval user setup. So in the approval user setup, uh, each person that is going to be receiving uh, email messages and uh, in, uh, that's going to be involved in these uh, in the approval system needs to be set up here with their username uh, when they send out a purchase order who it's going to go to in this case uh, uh, Alice here is going to be sending it to David and if it's above David's limit David's going to be sending it to the admin and you can set up both sales approval amounts and purchase approval amounts and so in this particular instance uh, David has the ability to approve up to $500 on a purchase order if the purchase order is greater than that, then it winds up going from David to the admin, and the admin can approve up to $10,000. Now, I also have the uh, ability here for the admin is set up as the approval administrator. Somebody needs to be an approval administrator, and uh, I'm actually the admin, so I've set myself up as the approval admin. and. By doing so, I've also given myself unlimited purchasing power. So in any any of these uh, purchasing or sales strings, the uh, last person in the, in the string should have unlimited purchase approval, or you could wind up with uh, things that are out here in limbo land. Another thing that you need to do with each of these is you need to set up a notification setup. So here, when I have a notification, I'm going to email it. The choices here are email or note. And if it were a note, it would appear on my role center and let me know that there's something to approve. But in this case, I want to actually email this and I don't want to, I want it to be instant. So as soon as I send it out for approval, I want the email notice to go to each of these users uh, immediately. So if I check this one, for example, it's also set up for email. And you need to do that with each one of these. Uh, the system will default to sending notes and not email. So need to make sure that those are all configured properly. One other thing that's really important about the user setup is uh, where is the email going to be sent here? Now I'm sending these all to my own personal email account. Uh, so I'll get emails for everybody so that I can show them to you during this demo. But you would put in the unique email address where each of these users should have their notifications sent. The next thing that we'd like to take a look at are workflow user groups. So I can set up a group and in the group I can have uh, various users. So here I have uh, Alice and David and notifications are going to go from first to uh, Alice and then secondly they'll go to David. Now. The interesting thing is that if I wanted to have a workflow group set up so that it would go to the one that has the appropriate approval level, I can just change the sequence number and make it a one also. And what the work group will do is that in, in it will decide who has the authority to actually approve this and it will only send out a single approval. If I have these set up so that they are a one and a two, then it will go from Alice to David and so on and so forth. So this will be the sequence in which these workflows will, uh, this work group will actually work. And if I set up, for example, the admin here, uh, it would go to the admin third in this work group. So first of all, uh, the email would flow from Alice to David, David approve it. If it's over David's limit, it would go to the admin and, and the admin then could uh, finish up the approval. 
So that's how these uh, workflow user groups are set up. And again, if I change the sequence numbers, make them all ones, it'll pick the one who has the appropriate limit. It'll only send out a single notification to that one user. So I'm going to uh, close this up. And uh, I want to show you a workflow. This is a workflow that I created from uh, a template. And I'll show you how we do that. And uh, it is enabled. So this workflow now is actually ready to work when I, uh, I can send a purchase order out for approval. It'll execute emails and so on and so forth. And the way that uh, this workflow was created by go is by going to the workflow templates, going down to the workflow, uh, the the purchase order approval workflow here. And if we open this up, you'll be able to see what this looks like. So this workflow uh, basically comes in and allows me to set document types. So I want to send this on uh, documents. And approval of purchase document um, is requested. It has to have a status of uh, be type of order and a status of open in order for me to send out an approval. So if it's not an order and it isn't uh, open, I can't send an approval out. And then there are steps on what's going to happen as I move through this workflow. We'll take a look at this when we actually go over to the other side. And we see the, uh, you'll see that, that the workflow I have set up looks exactly like this. And we'll go through the important pieces of this. So I'm going to close this up. And basically, while I'm sitting on this, I can go to Actions. Uh, I can go to New and create new workflow from a template here. So if I click this, this will go out and create a copy of this workflow for me, which is how I created the one that I have over in the workflow area. And it'll just copy this workflow over for me with a name. And then I can, do, uh, I can edit it and make modifications to it. So I'm going to close this up. And now I'm going to go to my workflow. And we're going to edit this. And I'll basically show you the, the important steps and how this actually works. So what we're really looking at here is a, uh, a, a way to be able to uh, edit this workflow. And in order to do that, I, it, it is enabled currently. So I have to click the button off so that this is not enabled or I can't make any modifications to it. We're going to focus our attention on the first line here, Add Record Restrictions, and then Create an Approval Request. And in here, we have some options that are available. So I can set a due date formula here. So this approval is, uh, should be completed within one day. Delegate after one day, I've got set to never. But we could actually create delegates here. An approval type, this is going to use a, uh, a, a user uh, group. I could also make this set up as a direct approver. And if I have it set up as a direct approver, I can set up an approval chain. As I mentioned before, it would go through the purchase order users that are set up, looking at the limits that they have. And it would only send it to the appropriate approver that has the right limit to be able to approve that order. So this is the simplest of these methods. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it at this and just click OK. And I'm going to enable this workflow. So I now have a workflow set up. And it, this is ready to be used. And it should go out and, and pick the appropriate person in the chain to do an approval. So we'll just cancel this out. So we'll go out of here. And uh, we'll go back and actually see how this functions. So I've created a purchase order out here. And this purchase order is open. And it's for $1,000. So what I can do with this, uh, I'm logged in right now as Alice. So uh, excuse me, Alicia. So it's Alicia Thomberg. And so when she sends this request out, this should go to the first eligible person in the chain that would be able to approve this document. So all she has to do from the purchase order is request an approval and send the approval request. That's basically all that she has to do. And uh, it will change the status of this order to pending approval. And it says the approval has been sent. So this now is in a status of pending approval. So an email is sent to me by Alicia. She's the one that created the PO. And this basically uh, gives me the PO number, everything that's here. 
So uh, it, uh, unfortunately, I can't. Uh, my browser is open with Alicia, so I can't actually uh, click on this. I should just be able to click this and open it up uh, if I were actually logged on as the admin. But I'm logged on not as the admin, but by uh, uh, as um, Alicia. So uh, what I'm going to do is just navigate over, and uh, it, this will be in my approval request area. So I can go to the page called Request for Approval, and here is my purchase order that ends in 6009. It was just sent out for me, and the approval due date is by tomorrow because it has a, a one-day limit on it. So I can highlight this. I can open up the record, and this is Pending Approval. And what I can do with this now is I can just click the Approve button. And this will change this uh, approval to, or this order to released. And now I can go ahead and process the purchase order. Can't do anything with this purchase order until it's released. So this is basically the way the approval system works. I can send this down a chain to multiple people, to a single one. I just want to give you a simple example of how this works. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, remember to click below and subscribe for more.